As we begin to write our JavaScript code, we need to know where to put it. Just like with CSS, we have three places we can write our JavaScript in line with the HTML element using an event attribute, in line using a script element, and an external JavaScript file indicated with a .js extension. As with CSS, our best choice is an external JavaScript file, but let's look at the other two options first. Let's try out some inline JavaScript. We are back in VS Code with the Guess a Number game open on the left, looking at the index.html file. The browser displays our page on the right. So far, we only have our Guess button. Recall from earlier in this course that an event is a notification that an important action occurred. For example, a button has an on-click event providing notification that the user clicked on that button. Many elements support events and provide attributes for reacting to those events. Looking at the code, in the button element, type on, and we see the list of event attributes. Scrolling down, there are a lot of them. We can write JavaScript code to react to any of these events. Scrolling back up, let's use on click. We set this attribute equal to the code we want to execute when the button is clicked. As we saw earlier, one very common JavaScript statement that we'll use is console.log. The console.log method logs a message to the debug console in the browser. We'll use this often as we work with and debug our JavaScript code. In between the parentheses, we type the message to log, enclosed in quotes. Notice that we use single quotes here because we are using double quotes here. Anytime we have quotes within quotes, we use single quotes within double quotes or vice versa so the computer can match up the set. We end each JavaScript statement with a semicolon. Be sure that the entire statement, including the semicolon, is within the outer set of quotation marks. Looking at the browser, Open the Developer Tools to view the console and see our message. With Chrome, we press F12. With other browsers, check the menus or the documentation to open the Developer Tools. Once the Developer Tools are open, select the Console tab. Let's click the button, and our message appears in the console. Yay! We just wrote our first line of JavaScript for this website. Notice as we click the button again, the console increments a counter here instead of redisplaying the message. Next, let's try using a script element instead. Our first thought may be to put the script element in the head, like we have our link element. But for JavaScript code that accesses our elements, that's not our best choice. As we discussed earlier, the browser reads the content of our HTML document from top to bottom, running any code in the script tags. If we have our code near the top of the file, the code will run before the elements are displayed. This will impact the perceived performance, delaying display of our page. It could also cause a problem if we had to find elements that have not yet been displayed on the page. The recommended approach is to add the script element at the bottom of the page, immediately above the closing body tag. Let's add the script element here. Then we'll cut the console.log statement from our button and paste it here, and delete the onclick event attribute. Ready to try it out? In the Developer Tools, click the Clear Console button in the toolbar to clear the console. Then on the web page, click the Guess button, and nothing happens. Any idea why? Our code here is no longer reacting to an onclick event. Rather, this code runs when the browser processes our page. After the browser displays our elements, it reaches the script tag and runs the code there. Click the Refresh button in the browser to process our page again. And there's our message. Writing JavaScript in line with the HTML element made it easy to react to that element's event, such as the on-click. But writing code in line with our HTML makes the code harder to maintain and edit. So, how do we react to an event without an event attribute? We'll see that a bit later. 
For now, let's change our message text to Page is Loaded. We'll leave our VS Code and browser open and head back to the slides. So, there are three places we can write our JavaScript code. We can add JavaScript inline using an event attribute, such as onClick. We can add JavaScript inline in a script element. The script element should be at the bottom of the page, just before the ending body tag. In either case, it's more difficult to manage and reuse the code. Often a better option is an external.js file, as we'll see next. Before moving on, please like and subscribe.